Welcome to DC Today. I'm Trevor Cummings filling in for David Bonson. He is in the greatest city in the world. He's in New York City running around today, so I said I'd fill in for him. He'll be back tomorrow, though, with his special long-form Dividend Cafe. I'd encourage you to not miss it. And what is everyone talking about right now? The debt ceiling. If you're talking to somebody in finance, they are shaking their head and pulling their hair out like, why are we talking about this? It will get resolved. Yet, it's the headlines everywhere. So Kevin McCarthy said some positive sentiment towards it getting resolved. So markets took off. Markets were up two days in a row. Um, You saw the NASDAQ did a lot better than the Dow and the S&P. Why? Because it was led by the technology sector. The specifics were the Dow was up 115 points. That's 0.34%. The S&P was up 0.94%. NASDAQ up 1.51%. Like I said, the technology sector led the way, which was up 2.06% on the day. Real estate, the worst performing sector, was down 0.68%, and oil was at $72.06 a barrel, which was down 1.15%. So that gives you the daily happenings in the market. Some of the news, which was all basically muted by anybody's interest in what's going on the debt ceiling, uh, but you did have uh, uh, existing or new home sale, or sorry, existing home sales published today. It was uh, above estimation. Um, you had the unemployment numbers, which I'll pause there. The unemployment numbers were kind of interesting. Uh, We started January unemployment claims at around 200,000. You saw a little bit of spike, but then you had news come out saying that uh, Massachusetts, which seemed off the charts with where their claims were, had a lot of fraudulent claims. Um, And if you know anything about data, it's garbage in, garbage out. So uh, what they looked at is to see, hey, can they resolve some of those fraudulent claims? You saw just the unemployment claims in Massachusetts go from somewhere in the range of 35,000 down to 20,000. So almost cut in half. Uh, Still more claims than New York and Texas. And you can do the math. There's a lot more people in New York and Texas than Massachusetts. So those claims came in at um, 242,000. Last week, that was 264,000. Yes, above that 200,000 abnormally low threshold we set in January, uh, but still not a lot of labor concerns out there. Uh, In other data points, you had the um, Philadelphia Fed Factory survey came out, reported a negative reporting, which uh, that's nine months in a row, but matches what you saw earlier this week in the Empire State Survey. Again, all of this is leading indicators to what people think uh, the ISM prints will be. Um, I'm going to encourage you to go to the Ask David because uh, you can't get far from Donald Trump. Uh, he made his way to the Ask David section today. Uh, the reader was asking basically uh, if Donald Trump won the primary or if he ran or he didn't run, kind of what impact does that have from David's perspective on investing and how he manages the portfolio. Here's the interesting thing, and I love that David pointed this out. Um, He uses the word multivariant, meaning when you're looking at making investing decisions, it is never, and if you didn't hear that, I want to repeat it, it is never one variable. Um, If you're a Republican and think that markets do bad when there's a Democrat in charge, or if you're a Democrat and think that markets do bad when a Republican in charge, guess what? You are dead wrong. Um, You have to study history and look at the empirical evidence. It is a multivariant situation. You have to look at a lot of questions. And David listed a handful of those questions. So good reminder to investors to be careful uh, about how we let our political opinions um, and our fears and our anxieties, our hopes, and all that get in the way of sound investing principles. So um, if you want to build those sound investing principles, I'm going to invite you back tomorrow to read uh, David's Dividend Cafe. Again, that's the long form. And then I will be delivering on Saturday. Uh, every week, I try to do my best to, to give you a writing in thoughtsonmoney.com. Very easy to remember, thoughtsonmoney.com. So that'll be me signing off for today. And again, uh, you'll have David Bonson back with you tomorrow. Mm-hmm.